Santana in Quad. Tonight, I'll be doing a co-review of the debut and Abraxas from Sony Japan. And I've been enjoying playing Santana and Quad on my dedicated Quad full range system. Check this out. Wait for it. Bwong. Have an eight channel AB amp bridged to supply four awesome channels of output. I've got another amp ready to power the auxiliary fifth channel for the center when I want to listen to 5.1. Anyway, perfect environment to enjoy these guys. The debut and Abraxas. So tonight we're going to be comparing the new Abraxas SACD with the former DTS CD and uh, sort of a well circulated but unofficial DVD audio of the reel to reel. Now, this is the first time that the debut is coming to us optically, and I've been enjoying both. I'm happy that they both exist. And tonight, I'll be doing a co review with Wesley from High Res Edition. So until we meet again, I'll see you then. Well, Mike, uh, thanks for having me on um, Life and Surround. This is fantastic. I'm glad to join you tonight. And uh, I took a deep dive into listening to both the Santana uh, SACDs that have been released this fall. Um, yeah. You know, one coming out at the beginning of October, a few weeks later, we got, uh, that was the debut album. And then we got a few weeks later, we got the Santana Braxis second album uh, that they released in 1970. Uh, so 50 years on, we're finally getting them in a digital format that, um, yep. well, to let the cat out of the bag, they sound pretty freaking good. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased. Um, so you're like me, I, I believe. You have a couple of different editions of, of each of these albums. Uh, only of Abraxas. This is my first oh, ever. Okay. This is my first ever optical for the debut. Okay. Uh, and so I never had it on CD4. Q4 or whatever, but uh, Abraxas back in, I don't know, the 90s sometime? When were DTS CDs put out? You know, I, I should have actually looked at the date of that DTS CD that I have. Yeah. I, I don't know when that was put out, but... Um, I don't know, but it seems to me like maybe late 90s, because then yeah. um, DVD audio caught fire, if you want to call it that, like 2001, right. 2002, seems like there yeah. were a lot of them. So anyway, this is like trying to put six channels into the space of two in standard depth. Mm -hmm. So what could possibly go wrong? Um, but interesting way to try to make use of, you know, current for the time CD technology. And yeah. you, some, some of these DTS CDs sound pretty damn good, like uh, Lyle Lovett, mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Judges Ruth. Mm -hmm. sounds fantastic and not sure if that's like the DTS engineer mm -hmm. on the project or the way it was recorded was just really suitable but Abraxas and DTS CD does not sound that good. No uh, and then, truth be told when I got the disc I actually thought it was a bootleg. I really believed that it was a bootleg and I was just in shock about how poor the sound quality was on it and so for all these years I've, I've been, you know, hoping for a better release right. uh, and such. And it was really sad to, you know, have paid some money for this disc. And it just really, um, unfortunately, I mean, the biggest issue that I had was the phasing issues. And it sounds like a blanket is tossed over it. And it's just, you know, right. it's, a sad, it's a sad reality. But, but it, it was the technology that was available at the time. And what I still find interesting is that, you know, from a quad perspective, it still showed off what the quad media did, you know, right. even though, of course, as, as you pointed out, it actually is a 5.1, um, you know, entry because they used to make the center channel, they blended the uh, front speakers and then they right. sent a little bit to the subwoofer, you know. I never really paid much attention to that in, in the past, uh, so I never really thought that there was anything there uh, until you pointed that out. 
Um, yeah, so the DTS CD is technically 5.1, just synthesized center and subwoofer. Uh, then there's a Robin reel that has floated around. Uh, it's a true 4.0 DVD audio. Not sure what the source is. Uh, there's probably a quad historian out there that knows exactly what Robin reels are. It could be from a reel to reel source. I have a copy of that also. And so I took a listen to that as well today. And the new Abraxas SACD mm -hmm. is um, actually 5.0. Mm -hmm. It has a, a silent center or LFE. It's in the middle of the stack. Yeah. So um, they just did that, I'm sure, to try to drive compatibility with different uh, Blu-ray players and SACD players. Yes. If a source is pure 4.0, a lot of players don't handle it properly, and they either drop the fronts or the surrounds, uh, which is very disconcerting. It, it can be interesting, you know, to be missing half the mix because the other half is revealed. But um, I yeah. absolutely had no problem on my player, the Oppo 95. It, it uh, comes right up as a 4.0, you know. Um, I mean, yeah. it Shows yeah. spot, I know, but it, it plays in the correct speakers without any issue whatsoever is what I should have said. Yeah, no problem with a uh, quad on my uh, oppo as well, which is why I'm in here uh, in the quad station uh, for full range speakers uh, set exactly where Wendy Carlos says they ought to be. And yes. um, so I pressed my oppo into service in here because I do have a lot of true 4.0 material. Uh, but then I don't want, I don't have the money to put an oppo like in every room of my house. <laughs> so like my Sony X800 does drop two of the channels if, if the source is 4.0. Oh, so you've played it in there and it does, oh, oh, if it's a 4.0 source. Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. But this one works fine in that one also. Yeah, and so that's all I'm saying. They put a silent channel, mm -hmm. a silent fifth channel on this new SACD I believe to drive further compatibility. Like you go and throw this on a Sony player and this product from Sony Japan, <laughs> you know, will play all four of the channels that you want to hear. And the silent channel evidently doesn't harm anything. So that disc might look a little large to some folks. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it is large, but that's not the disc. The disc is the, is the color part in the center of the black yeah. is, uh, piece of plastic that it rests on with a, um, I, what, I, the holder in the middle to hold it. And um, it's a really neat um, way to actually secure the disc and keep it safe. I really yeah. like that uh, part of this product. You know, the uh, seven inch boxes, I find to be really fantastic. I love the larger artwork, the larger type that's on it yep. um, and such like that. Not that I can read Japanese, but um, it's still really cool. Yeah, a lot of the extras are in Japanese, but if a poster was available, uh, like back in the day for promotion, you usually get the poster. Yep. Abraxas has this foil coating. Yes. Uh, yep. Much like the uh, Miles Davis releases did. Yes. Yep. And then uh, you get this gatefold of the band. Yeah. And yeah, uh, very impressive about these Sony Japan quad releases in terms of the packaging. They don't overdo it. You get things that are meaningful, you know, that help you identify like what the tour was like or what the promo materials at the time were like. The artwork is bigger than a normal CD. So, you know, it just has more real estate for, you know, a better image. Um, I'm not sure how true to the original colors they are. Uh, because I don't have a lot of these original LPs, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like they do a fantastic job and I don't mind um, like digital downloads uh, and I there are plenty of albums that come in like the CD jewel case that I like just fine, but artwork that is like this meticulous and beautiful can like draw you deeper into totally draws content. Me it yeah. totally gets me excited and that's why i mentioned yep. it I mean, you know i love these larger format discs and you know for folks who aren't aware that are out there this is you know it's just not these two santana discs there's several others that have come from sony japan that are equally as compelling to have yeah you've got a you've you know, got a bunch of jeff beck releases and, uh, who else um I, I can't quite remember right now uh, billy billy joel okay and like you said herbie hancock 
So yeah, like, anyway, I keep, I hope they keep doing their thing. Uh, they're not the, the cheapest item around. Uh, they have tended to run me somewhere between like 45 and $65 maybe, depending on the deal or, you know, if it's a double album or whatever. But, um, you know, especially when like coveted surround albums go out of print, like $65 is not out of the question whatsoever. And to get it new, and to support a company that is like rescuing quad from, you know, annihilation. Uh, I'm certainly willing to help support that. Absolutely. I did a video, I did a video a while ago called like the great quad rescue. Um, and Sony Japan, I think was in that video, um, Dutton Vocalion, mm -hmm. audio, audio fidelity from a few years ago. So these companies that take a classic quad source, and put it out either on Blu-ray or SACD or DVD audio or what have you. Um, that's making it so that people with optical equipment, you know, meaning like a SACD or a Blu-ray player and, you know, like maybe even like an HDMI receiver. So someone such as myself can enjoy these classic quads uh, because otherwise you're looking at setting up, you know, a Q8 deck or a reel to reel or a CD4 um, turntable um, stylus system and with like a vintage quad receiver and none of that is cheap and none of that is easy necessarily to calibrate or maintain and then it can have you know issues with like if the heads are dirty or whatever so for me optical is just like so convenient there's a lot greater ease to to the optical world and to yeah. that end let's just get back a little bit to the the robin reel um you know so i had a flat version of that uh, that you know someone has uh, you know the digitized has already been converted uh i don't i assume yours is all you know yours is yeah it turns my cd case and, and you know, dts cd on one side and robin reel on the other so it's it's a that's a really good conversion uh, yeah, you know, the, i agree the, but the guys the difference is is that you know if you want to really Deep pump in the bass, you, you go to the Robin reel. You know, if you don't want right. um, real excitement at the top end um, and real um, what I call zesty clarity at the top end, then go to the Robin reel. It's it's definitely tamer at the top end. But the SACD, on the other hand, you know, doesn't have that hump. It has the vividness at the top end. It really sparkles and um, really um, the clarity is absolutely phenomenal. On the SACD, I really tried to listen to you know noise, the noise floor and stuff like that, which was super super low. Um, uh, so I'm really impressed by the transfer that the engineers did, uh, you know, for Sony Japan. That's not just for the Abraxas album; that's also for the uh, debut SACD. Both of them came out, you know, with just fantastic results. I felt that the um, the debut album had a little bit of um, uh, some; it was a little bit brighter in the top end. I especially the upper mids, you know, so there's maybe a little bit of a nudge there, mm -hmm. um, you know, which caused like the, the guitars to come forward and the vocals to come forward and stuff like that. And actually you'll hear a little bit of that too on the SACD. And one of the biggest complaints that if you read the forums, you'll notice is that people complain about the um, overzealous clave uh, at, you know, is at the start of Black Magic Woman, you know, as the keyboards start to circle and stuff, um, you know, then you get the yeah. clock head kicking in and that really hits you over the head. It's super loud. And that's because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, pumping something right in that frequency range. It's really hitting it. And that's, um, you know, but, but the rest of it just sounds phenomenal, um, uh, you know, to me. I was really uh, pleased with it. I love uh, the discreteness of the mix and how things move, um, you know, instrumentation moves from track to track. You, you don't always have the congos in the same speaker. You don't always have the drums in the same speakers. You got the guitars right. moving around. So it's always interesting. Yeah, uh, there are even yeah. playful moments where a uh, part will make its way around the room. Uh, yeah. I noted one down. Just well, my, the do. most common one is right at the start of Black Magic Woman with the keyboards. And that was the biggest fault failing to the uh, DT yeah. CD because it sounded terrible on that. It really was just, ugh, it just kept fading in and out and phasing and such like that. Whereas on this, it sounds really, on the SACD, it sounds really smooth. It sounds way smoother on the SACD, even in comparison to the Robin reel. And just yeah. that element alone tells me this is a really fantastic transfer. And then the opening of the debut waiting. Mm -hmm before Evil Ways kicks in, there's a crash symbol that's separated out from all the other percussion. And it goes around the room from 
channel to channel. Oh yeah, right. A couple times, and then it finally joins the drum kit, yeah. and uh, it's just like one of those things that you have to be like into quad to like you know <laughs> really appreciate that they put that touch in there. And well, another cool thing about waiting too is the kick drum is up front in the center, and that uh, hi hat is um, is you know jangling away in, in the back channel, you know too. And so they've they've spread the drums across the entire soundstage. Yeah, another <laughs> standout uh, percussion drum moment is the beginning of Jingo. Yep. Where, like, if you're into percussion, like that's what I get out of like Santana the most. I do like the guitar lines and uh, a lot of the singing and like the whole band is bringing something to the experience for sure. But like, I am a sucker for, especially in the seventies when um, rock or, you know, Latin rock or fusion oriented bands like had a bunch of percussion like in their groups. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for it every time. And so like you were saying, these mixes are discreet. And so when you get to hear the percussion broken out from the drums, uh, it just, it hooks me every time, uh, if it sounds good, and and uh, and these do. I I found a few moments, um, if a track was particularly quiet for a while, um, where there's a bit of hiss, uh, but that's to be expected on a on an older analog source. Yep, exactly. It's very minimal, guys. It's like really reduced, and you know, you know, to me, flat out, both of these are the best transfers that are out there compared to any analog um you know copy duplicated copy i mean this is the digital is 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 pure you're getting it right from the original master the quad master how you, know, you can't go any further in than that <laughs> <laughs> you know other than obviously mixing straight to digital um you know sure. but, but i'm still very impressed uh with with what we we're able to pull off and i'm really impressed by the mix that they were able to pull off back back in that day and as good as it sounds and then of course you do get high resolution well i'm not sure if that's the correct term for dsd but you get lossless mm -hmm. um highly defined uh stereo so you get stereo and quad on these and um yes you know, a CD layer, if that's your thing. So you get the highly compatible nature of the hybrid SACD. It, of course, like, <laughs> why are you talking about stereo? I just know, that, like, I, I will almost always get a comment, you know, like, oh, you're just talking about surround and like there's <laughs> stereo on there as well. So yeah, acknowledged. The stereo layers are very good. Um, I actually, um, I'm really mixed between the stereo layer that's on the Abraxas disc and the quad layer because I know the mix of Abraxas and stereo very well. And the quad mix is different. Um, you know, specifically that clave at the beginning, which hits you over the head, but also the um, mm -hmm. Gypsy Cry. That Gypsy Cry is, is you know, you don't hear it on the stereo mix. Uh, whereas it's very distinct on the quad mix uh, underneath the solo, uh, the guitar solo um, in Gypsy, which is, you know, the tail part to Black Magic Woman. And um, there's other things like the vocals are more present in the stereo mix compared to um, the quad mix of Black Magic Woman as an example. Um, so there's subtleties like that, that that are critical to me as a longtime listener of that album. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to, I'm going to find it hard pressed to always put on the quad mix when I want to crank up that, that album because I know the other mix so well. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm even, though, even though I'm the life and surround guy, like I listen to plenty of music in stereo. So yeah. no harm, no foul. You know, it's what engages you in the music the best. And sometimes that's going to be quad and sometimes that'll be Atmos and Sometimes it'll be mono. It just depends. Yeah, exactly right. It just yeah. depends. So, any other um, things you'd like to highlight about these SACD releases? No, I think I've said my piece. I'm really. Um, <laughs> I think uh, basically, you know. It sounds to me like you like them. Yeah, I love them a lot. I think they're. <laughs> I'm very excited to have uh, picked them up. Um, I'm very excited that they have gotten released. Guys, get your copies. These are limited editions. Um, you really can't go wrong, especially if you're uh, a quad 
quadraholic like uh, both uh, Mike and myself. You know, you, you got to get these. But more importantly is that is that you know down the road if 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 folks like us do continue to buy these um, and show show our uh, demand for them, we hope that they'll release more of the Santana catalog among other artists. And you know, we did just get um, yeah, for sure. Doobie Brothers, but, but there's plenty more of the Santana yeah. stuff that's out there that I would love to get my hands on. Um, yeah, Dutton Vocalion has put out one, um, right. but it was a little bit more obscure album. Yeah. And I went and auditioned it just on Tidal or YouTube or wherever and didn't love it. So didn't invest in that one. But like you can see, like I have picked up plenty of material from Dutton Vocalion so far. I love yeah. their their stuff like the Guess Who, yes. uh, you know, things, like, things of that sort. But yeah. yeah, it's nice that we do have some variety of companies that are dealing with quad, sometimes a quad uh, mix is involved in like a larger package even like dark side of the moon or some eric clapton stuff uh i love it when they're standalone when they're affordable uh and the way that sony japan like curates their catalog it's like meticulous and it's very good but you know you'll be aware that you know quad mixes are unique from the stereo mixes <laughs> they, and, yeah they can be often are yeah and and in some cases there's things that are that are missing or added in, just like I mentioned with the Santana mix. Yep. And those differences can be make or break for um, you know some you know particular piece of music that you enjoy. You know, so do be aware of that. But but from a sound quality perspective and from a discrete perspective, every one of the ones from the Sony Japan line that I've picked up have all been fantastic. And these these are absolutely spectacular because they're really good mixes. Also. You know, I would just say the only exception and um, not saying it's anybody's fault in particular, right. but like their release of Jeff Beck's Blow by Blow mm -hmm. is out of phase. Uh, oh, just, it was those that was out of phase. That's right. Just yeah. like the earlier, like Sony Epic version. Like they did not correct that for the seven inch packaging. And I did not pick that one up. I got the one from, from the American side. <laughs> yeah, um, Analog Productions yeah, is Analog Productions, yeah. the definitive quad yeah. you know, optical blow by blow. I just wanted to make that one caveat. So with that yeah. one, with that one, you know, minor um, oversight, like <laughs> the, yeah, the care and the quality that are put into these things. Like I'm a sucker for these seven inch releases. I don't always go in for them if I already have the format, um, like Billy Joel, The Stranger. Um, you know, I already have it. And, you know, it took me forever to hunt down that out of print, you know, SACD. So I don't always go in for these just because of the packaging, but particularly if it's the only way to get it, like Bitches Brew. Yes. You know, Live Evil. Yeah. Yeah, these are some killer releases. Hey, so I appreciate you joining me for this. It's always a lot of fun for me to talk, mm -hmm. surround, and quad with a buddy. Like, you know, I can, you know, <laughs> I could sit here and, you know, give my take on albums. You've definitely caught things about these albums that I wouldn't have paid attention to. Uh, you have a history with it that I don't. I am familiar with Abraxas quite a bit because it was in my then girlfriend's dad's LP collection, uh -huh. became my fiance and then my wife. <laughs> and so um, I've heard it like ever since, you know, I was, you know, a, a teenager. Uh -huh. But then especially for the debut, like I've heard Evil Ways <laughs> and that's cool. about it. And then, you know, it like opened up this like, really remarkably good album. Uh, the debut is a little bit raw and a little bit more basic than Abraxas. And then you get to hear like the band got fleshed out and the arrangements got more complex. Uh, so for me, that's, that's like what these quad resurrections do. Uh, you know, I get excited about the release one way or another, and I don't always have a deep connection, like a historical connection with the music. And, but it's to my benefit, because I think the debut is a solid record. There's oh, like God. some nice the Latin. Debut really very, the debut is very drum oriented, conga oriented, you know? It's got a lot of that happening and even you know, less guitar and and uh, and stuff than the than the second album. And when it really, does jam though, it really jams. It, it like uh, has absolutely. has yeah. like some heavy riffs that remind me of like cream. Yep. Um yeah, so I don't know. We're just rambling now, but it's like exactly. I was saying. It's, it's, thank you, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, Mike. Uh, um, good to chat with you, and 
everybody go grab these discs. You're going to love them. Yeah, and I know I've been a fan of what you've done with High Res Edition for you know quite some time. And Thank yeah, you. this this felt like a fun release just to do a little collaboration on and hopefully bring a little bit of exposure to your site because it's extremely informative and I'm glad that you're there. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, vice versa. Uh, I know that you've sometimes linked um, reviews in, on your blog and stuff. And it's well appreciated. Yeah. It's just nice to hang out for an evening and, and uh, talk about what we love. Sounds good. Good to talk to you, Mike. Thank you. All right, my man. And until we talk again, um, I hope things are well. Okay. Same All right. Same. Yep. Take care. I hope you've enjoyed this co-review of the two new Santana SACDs in quad. I hope you're having a happy December, and until next time, live your life in surround.